on this note, we would hear how illegal mining is impacting on agriculture in many ways. And I'll start off with the peasant farmers. Dr. Charles Naba, please. Let's make welcome Dr. Charles Naba. Thank you. Good morning. I thought uh, with this uh, important national issue, I would have been given uh, more time to, to deliberate, but uh, I've just been informed that I have uh, five minutes. Um, I want to first of all thank the organizers of this program. They couldn't have been a better time to do this than now. Currently, we all know our food situation. Food inflation since last year has been the major lead of the inflation basket. And without food, we cannot talk of national security. We cannot all be sitting here. If you look at all the mining areas, or Galamsey operating areas, the same areas are known for our major food basket um, in some years ago. But today, we cannot talk of that again. All this can be attributed to Galamsey. We have a lot of uh, outgrowers agro farmers who produce various types of food, maize, cassava, rice, in northern part of the country and in Volta region. Today, when you go there, you will never get the youth who will be interested in being part of agriculture again. Majority of them move to Galamsey operating areas because they get quick money. So our agriculture is virtually left in the hands of the aged. So that is one area that we need to pay attention to. When you go to the main Galamsey operating areas, like Pristia, Obuashe, Amanshe in the Asante region, Bogoso, and many other places, major crops that we used to get from there, for example, if you take Obuasi some years back, we used to get the sweetest citrus and other oranges from that place. Today, when you go to Obuasi, they have to depend on importation of citrus from other areas. Cocoa is our major cash crop. We had the highest cocoa in the um, yields and productivity in 2021. Around the um, 1 million metric tons. Today, it's about 580,000 metric tons. And I'm not a prophet. I can bet you what is going on if this will continue. In some few years to come, we will not have any cocoa to export. You take cassava, maize, most of the Galamse growing areas were known for supply of cassava and maize. Today, they all have to depend on other regions for this commodity. So the issue of Galamse and its effect on food production is something that we cannot doubt it. It's not something that anybody can debate. Last week, um, I was fortunate to, to be part of a team that uh, the Ministerial Committee on Galamse were engaging. We met the small uh, scale miners. We told them clearly, because they said our call for ban on all form of Galamse or small scale mining was going to throw about one point something million of their members out of business. We have over two million smallholder farmers, majority of whom are peasant farmers. Uh, Forestry Commission released a data that about 1.5 million of those farmers have lost their farmlands. And now some of them have joined the Galamse activity and others to 
migrated to other areas. So it means all those people have lost their livelihoods. This is a, a priority of, a, uh, of the nation. Do we want to maintain the one million smallholder um, miners who are destroying our water bodies, who are destroying our farmlands, who are causing harm to the environment? Or we want to maintain our food security and ensure that we have clean drinking water, we have quality food that we cannot be eating and be afraid that we are taking Makri. According to World Health Organization, Makri caused a lot of da damage to the farmers themselves and the Galamseyes. Because one, it fans its way into your body. There's nothing you can do. It's a matter. It's unlike other things, like um, other chemicals that you say, okay, with time, it will be digested. But today, go to Galamsey operating areas. Majority of them, about 90%, who do the, um, who mine in the rivers, are using mercury. And the deposits are left in the water, which um, we always say is purified before we drink or use it for other things. We have farmers in summer area. Last week, we were there. They are growing rice around the, uh, one of the dams there. According to them, if they use the water to uh, irrigate their farms, it actually affects the yield. So if they, they, the crops are even drying up and then they allow them and the rainwater come, those crops are different from using water from the river. So this is what we are going through. And we as an association, uh, of the view that if you all don't join the fight, so in a few years to come, the crisis that we are having now is going to be worsened. Because the crises are not limited to only availability of the food that we eat, but also the labor to even produce. Some farmers gave us testimonies that in some of the areas, even if you don't want to sell your cocoa farm, the chief and the miners will go and do negotiation and they'll give you 1,500 Ghana cities for a plot. If you don't agree, before you realize all your neighboring farms are being mined, and then they will even dig pits, you won't even get access to your, your farm. So you have no option than to also release your farm. There are many of them, because they polluted the surrounding farms, when they farm, the yields are so bad. So they voluntarily also sold their farms or partner with other people to come and do the mines, the mining, instead of continue to, 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 to mine and find alternative jobs. So it means some few years to come, all those mining areas, we are not going to have any agriculture activities taking place. People are talking about reclaiming the, the, the lands. To be very honest with you, that reclamation project is not working. Even if they reclaim all those lands, it will take several years before those lands will become fertile for any agriculture activities. When we come to the forest vegetation, almost we lost all our natural forest vegetation. The recent climate change that we have experienced, which people are talking of grass pelt, which destroyed almost about 60% uh, of farms in northern Ghana, Bono region, and part of the forest area, can partly be attributed to the way we have destroyed our forest lands for Galamsey activities. So in terms of impact of Galamsey on our food security is something that we cannot be measured. But the impact, at least for now, uh, there are many who think that we are exaggerating the situation. But per our projections, and projections by Forestry Commission and the Ministry of Food and Agri itself, the rate at which Galamsey activities is taking place across the country if this race will continue in the next 10 years, I can bet you that all those areas, we cannot boast of any food security or supply of food to other areas. So we have two messages, and we stand by that. That there is urgent need for burning on all Galamse activities in rivers and then in the forest vegetation. The, whether it's legal or illegal, it should be banned. Now we should also allow community to take control of um, actually watching, serving as a, um, a security to the lands where we operate Galamsey. 
because we have lost confidence in all the committees that government has set up to control GLMC. Because I saw the video that was played and the commitment by our president. It didn't work. And there were several committees that were set in the past. It didn't work. So we are calling that communities should take control of their own lands. Anybody who is caught doing any form of guarantees in those communities, the community have the right to arrest them as performing or doing illegal activity. So um, once again, since I don't have enough time, uh, I want to thank you again and that we stand by you. Whatever position you take, that will help either address or stop this menace. The Peace and Farmers Association of Ghana will always support you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Charles Nyaba. And rightly so, we're using our hashtag, use your voice. Use your voice because silence is not an option anymore while we continue to die as a result of illegal mining. We're all seeing the threats that we're faced with. And at this point, we cannot continue in any way to go through that vicious cycle of doing the same things and expecting different results.